when your decisions are coming from this place, they are not coming from a place of authenticity. So we have to do the deep inner healing to figure out who we are underneath all of that, underneath the trauma and conditioning and labels. Who are we when we strip all of that away? Who were we meant to be? It starts opening up some questions, right? Hello everyone, we are back on Reconditioned with this Rise episode about authenticity. Now don't forget a lot of these episodes feed really nicely into the other ones and about doing this work as a holistic practice. So episode 49 about identity will really complement this one, as will episode 87 about how to do inner child work. Now, before I get into it, I just wanted to remind you to subscribe to my newsletter. So not only do I send out monthly full moon newsletters with loads of recommendations and tips and resources and recipes and discounts and all other fun stuff, but it's also how you'll be kept up to date with both online and in-person events and retreats, courses, anything new I might be offering. Um, and I also send out lovely emails offering advice like this about inner child work, authenticity, things that you can do to help yourself move into a deeper place of growth and healing. And the full moon newsletter Get sent on the full moon each month with a reminder about how to make the most of the full moon and tips on creating a little intentional ceremony around it. So yeah, that's all there. And don't forget also on the website, which is laurenvacneen.co.uk, there is the LV recommends page. And I say this again because I get messages daily on Instagram with people asking me for recommendations. So my team created this page for this reason, because I wanted everything I recommend, everything I have tried and tested and love to be in one place for you guys to be able to find really easily. So every product I recommend, including supplements, health tech gadgets, books, articles, anything at all, it's all there. And it's categorized in little categories like children and pregnancy, gut health, detox, immune, et cetera, et cetera. So that will make it easy for you to navigate. And most of the products have discounts as well. So that is the best way to find all my recommendations. Um, and if you do want to get your name on the um, the newsletter, if you want to sign up to the newsletter, the link for that is in uh, the show notes here. Okay, so let's get on with the episode. And of course, as usual, if you enjoy the show and you feel you've benefited from it, feel free to pay that forward by sharing it with friends and leaving a review. Thank you so much, my lovelies. Okay, so before I start with the episode, just uh, a little note that my kids are here playing and um, so there might be a bit of background noise where you'll hear them, but this is the reality and I hope you're okay with that and if you're not, perhaps this isn't the podcast for you, but I'm guessing if you're here then it is and you don't care. So uh, that aside, what do I mean when I speak about authenticity? Now I'm not talking about being authentic on Instagram, like Instagram versus reality and all that nonsense. Even that isn't authentic. When I speak about authenticity, it goes way deeper. So when I teach the Recondition Your Life Academy, I say to my ladies, this course covers a lot. You will learn about inner child healing and shadow healing and sacred sexuality and brain training, meditation, self-love, blah, 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 blah. But really, it's a course about authenticity, and I'm going to tell you why. Everything in this healing journey is about authenticity. So when I speak about authenticity, I'm talking about how conditioning and trauma have shaped us into becoming something completely different to the authentic being we were when we came into this world. Now, if you grew up with an alcoholic parent, even if they love you and they, or they loved you, they love you and didn't abuse you, but there was a consistent undertone of instability. You would have been conditioned to make decisions and navigate your life from that space. Your brain would have had to learn how to do this in order to keep you safe. Same goes for if you grew up with a parent who was depressed or anything where you did not feel completely stable. So as an adult, this might present itself with you choosing to stay in a relationship that doesn't really serve you and one that you know isn't really right simply because it offers stability and you're doing the same thing with your job. It isn't your life's passion and you know you're not living in your purpose, 
But the risk of leaving the partner and the job and suffering instability is too high for your nervous system. This nervous system raised on instability, it's too much for a nervous system like that to manage. So as I spoke about on episode 87 about inner child healing, this is what we mean when we talk about a trauma response. When your decisions are coming from this place, they are not coming from a place of authenticity. So we have to do the deep inner healing to figure out who we are underneath all of that, underneath the trauma and conditioning and labels. Who are we when we strip all of that away? Who were we meant to be? It starts opening up some questions, right? Okay, so one of the challenges I hear from you guys the most is how hard it is to drop into meditation or even to relax and just feel calm. And you know I speak a lot here about how our bodies have not evolved to manage the level of stress we're faced with today, which means we're constantly in fight or flight mode with our sympathetic nervous systems always activated, which we know leads to depression and anxiety and also chronic health problems. If we want to be well, we have to find ways to mitigate this, we have to do that ourselves. And I believe in merging natural daily practices with the kind of health tech that enables us to counter and mitigate the challenges that modern life throws at us. And the Sensate is one of those products and I want to tell you about it. So the Sensate is a small palm-sized device that sends infrasonic waves through the chest in order to activate the vagus nerve and calm the autonomic nervous system, which is the body's command center. Together with the specially composed hemispheric audio within the app, you will literally feel calmer after only a short session. I give this to anyone I'm with if I have it on me, which I usually do, and everyone has the same response. It's amazing and I already feel less stressed and where can I get one? Now I'm particularly recommending the Sensate to anyone who suffers from anxiety and wants to help calm the nervous system, those who want to deepen their meditation practice and people who are looking for ways to be calmer and more grounded. Now most of you know I work with a Shaman, and he has taught me that our higher intelligence places ideas of health technology in the minds of those who can create and invent these products. And I truly believe this to be the case with things like the Aura Ring, the Summer Vedic, even diagnostic devices in hospital. And for me, I believe that to be true with the Sensate. We have lived for too long in a high stress state. We need more to help us counter that. So you can get £20 off the Sensate by visiting getsensate.com. That's G E T S E N S A T E dot com and using the code Lauren twenty. That's getsensate.com and the code Lauren twenty. Thank you to Sensate for partnering with Reconditioned. And now back to the episode. Now, caveat here also, there is a paradox in this. Because although the trauma takes us out of our authenticity, it also shapes us in positive ways. Now, if we want to go deep, We are cosmic beings living a human experience and we chose this human experience in order to to expand on our spiritual evolution. We chose our parents for very specific reasons. The trauma helps us heal. Now I'll get onto this in more depth in my next Rise episode, which will be all about trauma, how to inform ourselves on it and start processing it. So make sure to watch out for that. But in the meantime, We just have to know that although we wouldn't consciously choose choose traumatic things to happen to us, the healing we're forced to do as a result of them enables us to grow exponentially. We experience growth way deeper and are able to live much fuller lives as a result of the healing we are forced to do due to the trauma we've suffered. So as an example, I wouldn't have chosen to spend 27 years of my life, some variation of disabled, having a childhood where I couldn't do what other kids could do and undergoing painful procedures and spending days and nights in hospital and the way it, you know, really affected my whole family and all the million other traumas that came as a result of a lifetime lived with chronic illness, where at 38 years old, I am still healing from those traumas. I'm still going back and healing that inner child in me. But because I chose to go down a path of holistic healing and go deep into my healing journey, it enabled me to create a life far richer than the one I would have had, had I not have had arthritis. So yes, the trauma and conditioning take us out of our authenticity. But if we do the deep work to heal, it leads us even further towards our authenticity than a life spent with no trauma would. 
So let's think about ways in authenticity might show up in you. So if you were raised without complete stability at home, you might be a people pleaser. And even if you had stable parents and good, lovely parents, but they were constantly telling you about being a good girl because this is what we're taught we're meant to be, you might have grown up with what I call the good girl syndrome. You know, because my parents accepted me and showed me most love when I was a good girl, I need to be a good girl now all the time. So you never do anything to rock the boat. You never speak your truth. You tell yourself stories about, I don't like confrontation. Now, no one should ever want to choose conflict, but that is different to confrontation because people who are stable and secure in who they are can stand up for themselves if someone says something they don't agree with or there's a situation that needs them to speak out. They know how to do it compassionately and they don't go into it choosing conflict, but conflict resolution is something they're fairly comfortable with and it won't make them believe that they'll be cast out. Now, on the flip side, if everyone in your house shouted a lot, maybe you're really loud because that's the only way you were heard in your house. And so you tell this outward story of, I'm just a really loud person. But maybe given the opportunity to get to know yourself, maybe under that you learn that you can be heard without shouting. And naturally, you're quite a calm person, or at least you have the ability to be. So I want to go back to people pleasing because actually this needs some more time. And people pleasing is very much a trauma response. So much so that it is called, it is now being referred to as the fawn response, which is the fourth trauma response after fight, flight, and freeze. And I am going to be doing an episode on this too, because I really think it deserves some real time. But it essentially, it's when we fawn or give our attackers what they want in order to protect ourselves. So as a trauma response, we're just fawning all the time by people pleasing. So if you're always telling people what they want to hear, or you're always telling people you're fine, always putting on a front, saying anything you need to, to keep the other person happy with you, this is so far from authentic that the more you do it, the further it will take you from your purpose. You'll essentially forget what you truly believe in at all, not even know what you believe in, because you spend all your time saying anything you need to, to make others accept you. So how can you possibly be authentic if you don't allow yourself to get to know yourself? Or another example is maybe you're always the funny one. You're always trying to make people laugh because you did this as the class clown and it was the only time you got recognition. You don't see your value beyond being able to make people laugh. Now, my husband actually used to do this. He used to smash his face into a cake at a restaurant every time he was out with friends because he did that as a teenager and his friends found it hilarious. But as he got older and never really got to know who he was, this became his security the thing that he found people valued him for until he did the work and learned that his value didn't come from anything he offered anyone, but for what he authentically was inside. And once he found that, he stopped doing things that didn't align with him anymore. So, you know, he used to say to me, you're not accepting who I really am by telling me I shouldn't be doing this. I said, I'm not trying to tell you you shouldn't do these things. But this isn't the real you. This isn't the authentic you. You're doing it for approval. And that was really triggering for him for years until he realized that he he had placed his value in this behavior. But now that doesn't mean that it's not enjoyable to make people laugh as well. I didn't want him to stop using laughter, but we stop acting on these behaviors simply because we don't see our value beyond that. Right? We laugh because it's medicine. When you're in a group of like-minded people who value you for who you truly are and you can all laugh together, that is medicine for the soul. Another example is maybe you grew up with parents who didn't speak openly about emotions. So you've given yourself that label of, I'm not an emotional person because that offers you an identity you understand. But if you grew up with parents who were emotionally intelligent, you wouldn't be like this. So is this authentic to you? Or is it simply something you understand? Now, I've had clients who present themselves with the identity of, I'm not an affectionate person. I don't like people touching me. This isn't an authentic identity. And when we did the work on this, one particular client realized it was all based on a childhood of instability. So this was her way of protecting herself. And she now allows affection. And she won't tell people anymore, I don't hug as a protective mechanism, 
She's changed that story and removed it from her identity because it wasn't authentic to her. It was a trauma response. So I'm sure you can imagine there are many, many examples of how inauthenticity plays out in humans. And obviously I can't list them all here because there are infinite ways, but part of this process of growth is for you to sit down with your journal and write down all the ways you act that might not be completely authentic to you that are a result, as a result of trauma or conditioning. Now, once you recognize them, you can work on healing the trauma or reprogramming the condition, the conditioning that created them so you can step into your authenticity. If you want to find your purpose and you're out there like, what the hell am I meant to be doing with my life? I can tell you, you won't find it unless you know yourself fully and completely in your true authentic brilliance. And like with anything when it comes to self-optimization and growth, it is so not easy. Finding your authentic self under a lifetime of conditioning is really hard work. And the even harder bit is that when you do step into it, people who have known you for a long time will find it hard to accept you. In their eyes, this new you will seem inauthentic, ironically, because they only know the you that you've always seen or that they've always seen. And if they haven't done this work, they'll think you've gone mad and might even find it hard to be around you. They'll see this new you as inauthentic, the complete opposite, because they're only able to understand the old version of you. And you may go through a shedding process around this time, which is what I had to do in order to move on from the people who no longer served me so that I was in a better place energetically to call in the people who could accept me for who I was now who I truly was once I'd moved away all that trauma and conditioning, who I was underneath all of that. And that person person was a culmination of all her trauma, but she had also healed it enough to know who she truly was. Anyone who couldn't understand or accept that had to go. Now that doesn't mean you'll stop talking to anyone in your life who doesn't get the new you because sometimes it's family and sometimes we can't just step away from that. And also sometimes a little bit of patience and compassion for their journey enables them to come to you eventually. Either way, we can find ways to manage it, to talk to them, to explain the work we're doing. You should be able to show up fully as yourself. But you do need to know that that could mean some difficult conversations with people in your life who are not yet immersed in this work. If you listen to episode 85 all about judgment, that will really help you to understand why they're judging you and give you the tools to manage their judgment better as you step into your authentic self. Now, the last part of authenticity is to understand that everything is energy. If you listen to this podcast a lot, you will know I say this all the time, everything is energy. If we are operating from a place of inauthenticity, we will not be able to manifest on a huge level. End of. The things we consider bad things that happen to us along the way, These are the universe's way of pushing us to a rock bottom that will help us recognize what's going wrong in our lives and how we can step more deeply out of that patterning and into our authenticity. When we heal all the conditioning that caused us to operate inauthentically, we're then much more open vessels to receive from the universe all that is meant for us. Energetically, we raise our vibration by healing and operating authentically making us magnets for the amazing things we want to manifest into our lives. So again, another episode recommendation, but head to episode 53, all about how to manifest if you want to get a deeper understanding on how this works. But honestly, manifestations will flock to you once you're operating from your true authentic self. That is my kids knocking on the door, if you can hear that. Desperate to see me. So (laughs) thankfully, it's right at the end of the episode. So I hope This helped you to give you clarity on what it means to find your authenticity. And remember also all my meditations are on my YouTube channel and these really help with all this reprogramming work too. All right, my lovelies, sending love to you and gratitude for you for being here and making the choice to heal you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Reconditioned. I am honestly so grateful to each and every person that tunes in. Thank you also for taking responsibility for your own well-being. You should know that just by choosing to listen to podcasts like this that further your well-being, you're moving more deeply into abundance consciousness. 
Now, don't forget, I have a bunch of free resources over at laurenvacneen.co.uk, as well as every recommendation you could ever need in regards to your well-being on the LV Recommends page, all categorized for your ease. Thank you also to our sponsors. These episodes would not be possible without them, so make sure to check them out and get some pretty awesome discounts on the show notes. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast so that you can get updated each time a new one is released. Thank you. I appreciate Appreciate you. Reconditioned is proud to be working with Women for Women International, a charity that supports women survivors of war in eight war-torn countries around the world. You can help a woman survivor of war transform her life today by visiting womenforwomen.org.uk forward slash donate.